So here's kind of a fun way to handle icons. If you need to build a menu for your PowerPoint or articulate presenter project, these are kind of modeled after the little social media widgets that you see on a lot of blogs lately. Like here's Dave Mozellis's blog, and if we scroll down a bit, at the bottom of the post, there's these little options where you can you know, click to use a social media tool to share the post. And the buttons just look kind of cool, and I thought that they would function really well as a menu too. So you know, you can click through these and jump to a different part of the course. Of course, you can make the buttons look however you want with whatever symbols you want and even put words on them too if you wanted to. So the way that this works is the icons themselves are on a slide master in my PowerPoint file. So you'll notice I can't really click on these to manipulate them on my slides because they're not on my slides, they're on my slide master. And that way, if I've got lots of slides within a section, you know, like maybe a series of slides for the scenario section, I could just use the same slide master by clicking on the slide and then choosing the right layout. These are all my masters right here. And that way I'm keeping all of those buttons in one place and it's easier to maintain. Plus it'll really cut down on your publish time if you're publishing to Flash with Articulate Presenter. So if we go up here to the View tab and then choose a Slide Master, we'll see the buttons that I created. So I started out by making them all on one slide and then I just duplicated the slide four times, one for each of the buttons. And all I did was, you know, I kept everything identical except that I changed the height of the, um, the button that was active to indicate which section the user was looking at. And we also used hyperlinks here so that the learner could click on the buttons to jump to the section that they wanted to. And we'll cover the use of hyperlinks in a different screencast. So it's kind of an overview of how the icons work. In this screencast, what I really wanted to show you is how to build this little bar of icons here and make it look like this. So let's go ahead and do that. What we want to do is use the Insert tab and then choose the Shapes menu and then pick Rounded Rectangle. And we can draw a rectangle onto our slide. And of course, you can use the Format tab to select the shape fill that you want. There's lots of different colors to pick. Um, we'll just leave this one as blue. And then for the shape outline, you'll want to choose No Outline. And then for the shape effect to get that kind of, um, you know, glassy, rounded corner, um, you know, shiny look, we're going to use shape effects and then bevel. And the one that I used was the circle bevel right here. And now we can add a symbol. Now for the symbol, you can do a number of things. You can just draw your symbol using PowerPoint shapes. That's what I did on this little house. This is just, you know, shapes from the PowerPoint shapes options. Or you can add an image, or you can use um, some clip art from the Microsoft Library. We'll use this check mark here. It's just clip art um, that's available from Microsoft, so we can just position that right on our button. And then from there, you know, you could create additional buttons, you know, for however many options you want to give your learners. And of course, for each of yours, you would make them look different with different colors, you know, different icons or whatever. We'll just leave all these identical right now, and I'll let you figure out what you want to make yours look like. Okay, so now let's talk about the little shadow behind our buttons. Let me just move these over a little bit. The shadow is actually an oval, so we come up here to the Insert tool, choose Shapes, and then pick the Oval tool. And then if we draw an oval about that big, what we can do is then right-click on the oval, choose Format Shape, and we're going to give it a fill color of black and change the transparency to about 70% or so. That's pretty good. And then, oh, we need to get rid of the line too. So we'll choose Format, Shape Outline, and No Outline. So there's our shadow, and now we just need to give it that fuzzy edge around the perimeter. And we do that with Shape Effects, Soft Edges, and then 10 points looks about right for what we're doing here. And then we can duplicate this for each of the buttons. So I'm gonna um, hold down my Control and Shift, and then just drag to make a copy of these. And then we'll, we're going to select them all and send them all to the back. So we'll choose the Format tab and then choose Send to Back. And then we can move these shadows into place behind the icons. And you can play with the position, too, to make it look right. And now all we need to do is add that front edge of the little slot that they're in. And we do that with a rectangle. So we'll choose Insert Shapes and then the Rectangle tool. We want to draw a rectangle kind of a, right about midway through. And then for this one, we're going to choose a white fill. So we'll choose white and then no outline. And that's the look that we're looking for right there. And so now once you create your row of buttons, you can copy them to each of your master slides and then just adjust the height of each of these buttons, right, to indicate which section is currently active. And the result is going to be what we saw earlier when we look at this menu right here. You can see which one is active by which one is the tallest.